This is a video about making and selling iBooks for the iPad using iBooks Author and iTunes Connect. The video has three basic sections. We're going to look at an iBook, then we're going to look at the author interface and how to lay out documents. Finally, we're going to look at selling books through the iTunes producer. iTunes extends the EPUB open standard, makes it close, and adds uh, JavaScript and a few other things. The book I'm going to give you an overview of is called Kids Love Bugs. It's the first self-published iBooks 2 file sold on iTunes, and it's $2.99. My name is Jeremy Kemp. I'm a lecturer at San Jose State's School of Library and Information Science. The iTunes iBooks 2 file format extends the EPUB. That's from the International Digital Publishing Forum. This format, the multi-touch book format, includes template-based layouts. There are six templates I'll be showing you. You can control the size of the columns and add uh, multi-column layouts. A few things about iPad iBooks. You have to sell them through the iTunes producer. If you create an iBook, you can give it away for free, but if you make money from it using digital rights management, you have to use the iTunes setup. Apple takes 30% off the top depending on the market. So this is the set of books on my bookshelf. Some of these are the professional publishers, the Life on Earth, DK, Natural History, Insects. This is the book I want to take a look at. My kids love Bugs book. So I'm going to open it up. See the cover. Dr. Kemp's kids love bugs. That's called the intro media file. And then it immediately jumps to chapter one. And you can see here there's a chapter header page. Here's a book with multiple pages in the, in the section, in the chapter. So I'm going to open up the chapter header page. And this is a, an interactive widget, the gallery widget. Uh, all the widgets allow you to expand to full page. Here you can see a keynote animation with hotspots. So these are linked within the slideshow. So I'm going to start it up. So individual slides come with a sound when I uh, navigate through. So I'm going to go to the next page. This is another widget click on individual pieces within the photo and it zooms in. Finally a video file, M4V file, in the page. So I'm going to shrink this page down. You can see the layout of the book here along the bottom. Here's a different format page. All right, now that we've seen the iBook on the iPad, let's take a look at it within iBooks Author. In order to download the Author tool, you need iTunes 10.5 and also uh, Mac OS Lion 10.7 in order to even work with the iBooks Author. Uh, iBooks Author, it comes in the App Store and it's free. Okay, so I have two basic options here when I'm starting a book. First off, I could start with a template, and here are the templates they offer, basic, contemporary. I'm using this craft format. So I chose the craft format, and then craft format comes with different uh, page uh, layouts. These are templates. Insert, I can do a chapter or preface. I can insert a section, copyright forward. I can insert uh, just a plain, plain old blank page. Another thing I can do here is insert a chapter from pages or a Word document. And the Word document formats come in pretty faithfully. It's nice. Now just to compare, I want to show you, I want to compare that top bar here in the iBooks Author. Right back behind I've got a Keynote document open. And you can see a lot of the similar interface elements. In this case, Keynote up top allows you to add a slide, whereas Authors, uh, iBook Author allows you to add sections and page types. You also have uh, the same controls, text box, shapes, tables, charts. Um, one new piece here for iBooks Author is Widget, which allows you to add any one of these uh, seven types of uh, interactive widgets. Another new thing here in the iBook side is the ability to preview the book on your iPad real time, as well as to publish to a .iBooks format and eventually to the iTunes Store. You have the same controls here on the top right, the inspector, uh, media, colors, and fonts. So you can see the basic interface between keynotes and authors, very similar. There's a cover page which has a background you can see, and then uh, just some text fields here. 
you can change the font under format show fonts this is very similar to uh, keynote pages also here over here in the inspector i can change the alignment of the text the color of the text i can change the spacing i can change the color fill of that box i can change um, uh, flip rotate so lots of controls here i can add uh, tables and columns i can also add graphs and charts here and I can make a hyperlink to a web page okay next up let's take a look at the intro media this is quicktime file m4v and in this case it's just a few seconds then I've got the table of contents page this is the same throughout the book in my case I've made sort of an awkward choice here and just left the individual pages by themselves take a look at this by uh, DK you can see in this case uh, cheated a little bit here and made a single chapter book the first page being where they've marked start here okay now that you've seen uh, basically out of the book the basic interface compared to the keynote let's take a look at widgets seven different types probably the most common is going to be your gallery widget so um, here's an example of a gallery widget where I just sweep my finger across and I can see multiple images the next type is the media format and you can see here um, here's an example of media format here on the left with the chrysalis uh, hatching the chrysalis comes with media controls and next up interactive image this is a standard widget in author so here I have a JPEG format file and I can click on individual items and zoom in on them you can see here um, I position this item and then position the view for that item when you click on it so this is the final view for when you've clicked set the view come back out to the full image let's take a look out okay so that's the full image now when I click on that individual uh, item you can see it remembers the end position of the camera so this is nice it's it's limited but it allows you to zoom in on pieces the next widget up is probably the most interesting is the ability to import a keynote interactive so let me show you how to build a keynote interactive very quickly uh, to include in the book okay here we are in keynote what I have is 11 different views in uh, the interactive piece each one of these antennas cause uh, each one of these little hotspots if you click on them cause a new image the full image to show up including the highlighting on the individual uh, antenna so the way this works is I've got uh, 11 images with identical controls the the set of uh, icons around the image and you can see that the image in the middle changes but overlaying each one of these individual uh, controls out here is a uh, hyperlink to slide number so you can see in this case if you click in the top left this one right here you get to slide number two but if you click on the next one you can see you go to slide number uh, two sorry and then the next one slide number three so in that way uh, this is a let me play this keynote illustration for you and you get the same effect that you'll get on the iPad you can hear the sound whenever I click on any one of these hotspots I go to that individual slide okay let's take a look behind this image you can see that I've embedded a sound file so that sound file is set up to show upon building in start audio and that way it's a very simple keynote animation which allows you to move uh, between these 11 hotspots the final thing you need to do here is to make sure that this slide presentation only works on hyperlinks click on the document settings and choose hyperlinks only that's important the only way to navigate this will be through the hyperlinks and the person won't be able to click through and see a sequential slideshow let's take a look at two that are uh, much more complicated and have maybe a lot more uh, potential first off the 3d image so first thing I'm going to do is insert a page I'm going to choose the widget 3d widget move it over here to the side and you can see here it asks for a 3d file now iBooks author requires a .dae that's a collada file format first off start up SketchUp program from Google and allows you to import 
uh, images or 3D objects from the 3D warehouse. So let me go to the models page and search for something like um, uh, ants. So uh, these are all 3D models that are available, not necessarily uh, free of license. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add this one right into the model. It's a 3D model, and actually you can see it's 3D because I can zoom around it like this. I'm going to export as a 3D model in the format of Collada. That's a .dae file, okay, and I export it. I'm going to go back to Books and choose, you can see the ants.dae format, and insert it. Okay, the next and most flexible widget is the dash code, HTML format widget. This allows you to place um, widgets in the same format as the Macintosh desktop widget. And you can see here, I'm going to go and find a dash code HTML. In this case, it will be in uh, the library on my hard drive under widgets. You're going to have to create these yourself. I've got a few here that will work kind of, sort of. Most of these widgets won't work because they require uh, file access or internet access. I'm going to place a, a calculator widget here and change the layout for this guy so that he's all on his own. There you go. So on the left-hand side, we have a Collada 3D model. On the right-hand side is a widget. Uh, those are created in an application called Dash Code here on uh, the Macintosh. So let's take a look at what these pieces look like on the iPad. Now that we've taken a look at an iBook and the author layout tool, let's take a look at the steps for selling an Apple iBook. First off, you need an Apple ID. Once you do that, download the iBooks author application. It's free through the App Store. Create your iBooks file. You'll also want to create a sample with maybe the first 10 or 15 pages of a book. Then you need to join iTunes Connect and create a paid account. You're going to have to give them your tax information, a U.S. tax ID. You have access to iTunes Connect and the ability to download iTunes Producer. Let me show you iTunes Producer. This is the home screen. Generally, you'd go ahead and create a package for, or a new book. I'm going to open a package for a book that already exists and show you the pieces. So this was something, this is the book that I originally submitted in order to make uh, Kids Love Bugs. So the book has an ISBN number. You have to have an ISBN number to get uh, through the, these steps. You need to buy an international standard book number from bowker.com. Here's the website. One ISBN will cost you $125. Ten will cost $250, and the price comes down uh, in bulk. Subtitle, gave myself the publisher. Be sure to put the publication date in the past, or you may be delayed having the thing published. How many pages? And I give a good book description here. Categories, you can add multiple categories, but be sure to include a primary category. So in this case, I have science, uh, life sciences, and zoology. But the primary category is juvenile nonfiction, animals, insects, and spiders. More information about myself, more information about the target audience. I don't have any related products. I do have the book set to sell for $2.99 in the tier three pricing. So you can see here rights and pricing is set. Next, I have the assets. This is where I will be uploading the .ibooks file, the main file, as well as a smaller version of the preview. I'm also uploading the cover art as well as four of the screenshots. These have a specific format. If you don't put them in the specific format, it'll, it'll just give you an error and tell you. It's gonna take you, once you upload this file, roughly 24 hours to several weeks in order to see it approved on the iTunes bookstore. Okay, the final step, go to iTunes Connect and manage your books. And you'll see this is a, an approved book with that little green circle there for all of these markets. Using iTunes Connect, you can also track your sales and trends and get ni nice charts and graphs. Here's a, a daily view, a weekly view, and you can divide it by free books, paid books. Also look at your sales, look at uh, previous days. Uh, they also have a handy uh, iPhone application. This has been Jeremy Kemp from San Jose State School of Library and Information Science with a quick video on making and selling iBooks for the iPad.